As issues such as states' rights and slavery plagued our nation, we will now begin talking about the causes of the Civil War. After the Mexican-American War, it was clear that a new compromise would be needed to figure out what states would become slave or free. At first, in the 1840s, the Missouri Compromise did not apply to the land from Mexico. An idea was brought up called the Wilmot Proviso that was proposed and said that slavery should be banned in all new territories. Obviously, this would be rejected by the southern states as they felt they would soon be outnumbered in Congress when it comes to representatives. Many people at this time instead called for the idea of popular sovereignty, which would enable people living in the territory to decide if their state would become free or slaves. Also at this time, we have a new political party created, which was called the Free Soilers. They pushed for all new free states. When the North and South could not agree on how a state would come into the Union, Henry Clay had to step in to stop an impending war. And he will come up with his next compromise, known as the Compromise of 1850. In order to make both the North and South happy, there were different components of the Compromise of 1850. To make the North happy, Henry Clay proposed slave trade be banned in Washington, D.C., and that California would become a free state. To make the South happy, he took the idea of popular sovereignty or voting for freer slave states for the new territories. Also, in the Compromise of 1850, we have a stronger Fugitive Slave Act. This act allowed Southerners to regain runaway slaves, but sometimes this resulted in people being put into slavery that were not originally slaves to begin with. Under this act, a slave catcher could actually take any African American off the street and return them to the South or bring them to the South, even though they were never slaves. This gave the Southerners power to go into the North to retrieve any runaways. Another issue that created more animosity or hatred between the North and South was the release of the novel Uncle Tom's Cabin. The novel was written by Harriet Beecher Stowe about a slave who was abused and dies after a severe beating. It became a bestseller in the North and made more people actually care about the cruelty of slavery. However, the South found it to be demonizing and believed it was propaganda and did not depict an accurate account of what slavery was actually like. Many Southerners at this time defended slavery, saying that it was good for the African Americans and made them more civil. They also thought that African Americans did not actually have the same brain capacity as a white person, which is, of course, completely false. Although Henry Clay's Compromise of 1850 will push off the Civil War for another 11 years, it also inspired violence. At this time, Kansas and Nebraska were getting ready to become states and Senator Stephen Douglas called for the organization of the Nebraska Territory into Kansas and Nebraska in order to get the Transcontinental Railroad built. This railroad would stretch from Missouri all the way to the west coast of California. At this time, because of the Compromise of 1850, these territories would use popular sovereignty or would vote on whether or not they would be free or slaves. In Kansas, a pro-slavery legislature was elected, meaning that they would have slaves. This greatly angered anti-slavery advocates, and they created their own government elsewhere. So essentially, Kansas had two separate state governments operating at once. Since this cannot happen, it was investigated. And when it was, it was found that the election was fixed, or they cheated, by people who were not even from the area. Many people from Missouri were sneaking into the Kansas territory and stuffing the ballot box with pro-slavery votes. Violence will then break out between the two governments and many people will be killed. This event was known as Bleeding Kansas. Eventually, once everything is sorted out, Kansas would be admitted to the Union as a free state, even though people had died over this issue. Not only was there violence between state governments, but there was violence within our own Congress as well. An example of this is the caning of Sumner. Charles Sumner was a senator from Massachusetts who was giving a long, fiery speech against slavery. Within this speech, he targeted many Southern congressmen, such as Andrew Butler from South Carolina. His speech was filled with personal attacks, such as Andrew Butler's speech impediment or that he wasn't very smart. Because of this speech, Butler's nephew came into the Senate days later and beat Sumner with his cane over his head, putting him into a coma. Southerners felt Sumner got what he deserved, while Northerners felt it was more evidence, just like Uncle Tom's Cabin, that the people who supported slavery were brutal and inhumane. 
many Southerners actually bought Butler canes to replace the one that he had cracked over Sumner's head. Another issue that would hurt the relationship between the North and the South even further was the Dred Scott decision. Dred Scott was a slave who was suing for his freedom because he had moved from a slave territory to a free territory. Under the Missouri Compromise, he thought that he should have been free because he moved over the 3630 parallel. When he sued for his freedom, the Supreme Court Chief Justice Roger B. Taney stated in his decision that slaves had no right to sue for their freedom because they actually have no rights. They are not actually citizens and were not seen as people. Also, he stated that the Missouri Compromise was unconstitutional and no matter where the slave was, when they were born and where they moved to, they were still a slave. Many people disagreed with the idea that African Americans were not more than property. An example of this was a man named John Brown. John Brown was an abolitionist, and he felt that God told him he needed to end slavery. He did this by acting violently. He took place in the fights during Bleeding Kansas, and at one point, him and his followers attacked Harper's Ferry, Virginia, killing slave owners and seizing their weapons from the armory. This was not the first time John Brown had acted violently against slave owners. Eventually, Brown and his followers would be captured and put to death by the army. However, John Brown still remains a martyr, someone who dies for the cause for the end of slavery. Our final cause of the Civil War is the election of 1860. Now, how exactly can an election cause a war? Let's take a look at our candidates. You will have our first ever Republican presidential candidate, Abraham Lincoln, run against Democrat Stephen Douglas, the same guy from Bleeding Kansas. Southern Democrats will run John Breckinridge. And then a fourth party, the Constitutional Party, will run John Bell. So we have four different people running for president here. Obviously, you should know who wins this election, as many of you know who was the president during the Civil War. Abraham Lincoln will win the election of 1860, becoming the nation's 16th president without one single vote from a southern state. If you take a look at the map on the right-hand side, all of the red states will vote for Abraham Lincoln. The blue voted for John Breckinridge, the light brown voted for John Bell, and the teal voted for Stephen Douglas. The South then felt that they no longer had a political voice in Congress and that their concerns would not be addressed anymore. And because of this, South Carolina will become the first state to secede or leave from the Union, starting the Civil War. In summary, the Compromise of 1850 actually caused more issues than it solved. It created violence in Congress and in the states, and it also created a bigger divide between the North and South regarding morals as well as politics. Also, Abraham Lincoln's election to presidential office angered Southerners because not only did they feel outnumbered, they also knew that Lincoln would not support any legislation in their favor as he was very against slavery.